Hello, and welcome to GTO Coach and Go. I'm Jim Delaman with Group Travel Odyssey. I want to thank you for joining us yet for another wonderful episode of GTO Coach and Go. Before we get started with today's topic, I do want to remind you, if you've not done so yet, if you're watching on YouTube, down below, you can hit that little subscribe button. And if you ring the bell by that subscribe button, you'll be notified anytime that we have new content on our YouTube channel. We'd also love it if you would follow us on Facebook and connect with us on LinkedIn as well. We've got a lot of great content and stuff on our social media channels, so make sure you take advantage of that. Well, today we are going to be discussing um, some information about an integration we have with one of our partners. And we're going to talk about the integration between GTO and we travel. But instead of me doing that, because it would be a very, very short coach and go if that was the case, I'm going to bring on our lead engineer, our resident expert on this, Christina Luth. So Christina, welcome. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. I'm really glad that we're going to be talking about this. I know a lot of times um, when we're reaching out or when we're talking to people about GTO, one of the questions that they have is, how do we handle individual registrations? How do we handle individual payments? And we go into a little bit of our partnership with WeTravel, but you are the person that would be able to explain it the best and go through this. And so um, this is kind of uh, going through an overview and showing exactly how this works between WeTravel and GTO. Absolutely. And it's great. We have a wonderful partnership with We Travel. Um, so they are the, you know, the booking site for your passengers to book and to pay. Um, and so the, the partnership we have with them allows you to take the information that you have within GTO and send it over there in order for collecting that information. And then also coming back once you have those bookings. So what I'm going to show today is how that process works. So before I go into that, just a shout out to the fact that if you are going to, going to be a member of GTO and you would like to use the WeTravel integration, most importantly, you do need a WeTravel account. So make sure to contact WeTravel. If you need contact information or help doing that, you can reach out to us. Um, but you will need an account with WeTravel in order to make this integration occur. Also, if you already have We Travel and you want to get this moving, or maybe you started the process and you want to finish it, reach out to us. You can reach out to the help desk. It's always the best, best place to make sure that somebody um, reaches out back to you. Um, you can contact us at help at gtonetwork.com and put help in the subject line. Um, we're going to be happy to help you get connected with We Travel. So without further ado, go ahead and share my screen. All right, so the first part that I'm gonna start with is really an awesome thing for you to use, and that is creating defaults for creating that trip within WeTravel. If, you've, if you already have a WeTravel account, you're probably familiar with how you create a trip over in that application. But when you have the integration with GTO and WeTravel, it will put that trip together for you. So it should save you a ton of time. Um, but one of the things that we travel offers is they let you ask as many questions as you want to the participants joining your trip. So what we do in GTO, the first part that you will do when you have this integration session with us. So this is a step-by-step -step process that when you contact us, this is the first stage. The first stage is going to be, what questions do you want to ask the passengers? So this is, what kind of data do you want to collect? Um, so what you will see here is to do the, the basics of at least what this part would be is you'd be adding in a question for each type of data you want. So if you want to ask them what their preferred name is, you might want to ask them exactly this text, and then you would label that question as preferred name. Ultimately, what that then does is it gets that data when they book back into Passenger Manager, which I'll go through at the last stage of this. And you will just do that for each question you want to ask. What I always suggest to people if you haven't used WeTravel, or maybe you already are, you know, get together with whoever that is on your team, um, whether it's one person, whether it's a few of you, and figure out what exactly it is you want to ask. Um, do you, you know, what data is going to be the most helpful? What is great about WeTravel is you can ask as much as you want. 
Um, so get together and figure that out. We do have suggestions for you as well with this passenger information type. You can even ask us for suggestions on how to word questions and we'd be happy to help you with that. So once you finish this part, you can also put in some customizable paragraphs. You will see there's some things that are required and um, about we travel and how that gets sent over. Um, you could have an about trip section. So if you want to customize that first paragraph right when you log into that we travel trip, there's a section at the top that they call about trip. So we allow you to have a customized message in there, which just really helps you from having to type it in all the time. Same thing with a welcome message. That's that email that gets sent to your participant upon booking. You can, instead of typing in that in every time, you can just have that in your defaults <clears throat> to be sent to WeTravel. Also on that first WeTravel page, WeTravel allows you to put in as many what they call paragraphs as you would like. So here are some um, ones that you could do, such as registration instructions, or maybe insurance information. There's a variety of, variety of things that you can do here um, that you would be able to then put as information on your WeTravel trip <clears throat> time, or even you can select which time. So that would be something, again, to save you typing that in. Also something we offer for defaults is if you like to customize your package names and descriptions. So this would ultimately be the first step of your we travel integration process. Once you have completed this, um, all of this information, you would reach back out to us, say, okay, I am ready. And then our team will get connected with we travel and allow you to then move over to our next stage, which is actually sending it to we travel. So when you are done with that, <clears throat> Our team will make sure that everything is updated for you, whether you have existing trips in GTO or maybe you're just a new GTO client. We'll make sure that this is all connected for you. So when you are in Trip Manager, so that is the first part of this, you would have your trip in Sales Manager and then send it to Trip Manager. So when you send it to Trip Manager, what you will see if you are a WeTravel customer, so once we have that first part completed, you will have this options to select for your we travel trip. So you will push that button. And this will be available every single time that you send a trip to Trip Manager. And you can also choose to skip it, which just just go back for a second. If you don't want to send this trip to we travel, maybe you already put it in there. Um, then you can also check this box and it will allow you to skip the sending to we travel process and just add it to, to passenger manager instead. If you are wanting to get data back from we travel, we highly recommend against doing that as this sending to we travel part is very important as it connects the two and it lets us be able to get the information back. So a quick overview of what this allows you to do, um, the sections that you will see are the same types of sections you will see if you've created a trip in we travel or if you want to look at it you'll notice they're very similar so we have our about trip section our welcome message message section um, so those are both things that are specific to we travel that they require and as you can see it already pre-filled in information so that's again where those defaults are super helpful is that they already pre-fill it in for you um, and then we have our questions. So every time you create a trip in Trip Manager, it's going to take a copy of all of those default questions, which is great because if you want to change the text that you ask that passenger um, for this one specific trip, you can do that. It doesn't have to be the exact same question every single time. Um, you can change it here. And then you can also choose to remove it. So if you don't want to ask the question this time, you can just check this box. Maybe you don't need to ask about allergies because maybe or food sensitivities because they're not going to have anywhere that they're dining. So you could just uncheck that. So that is purely up to you how you would go ahead and do that. And then you can also have ones such as this example I put in here of like, please indicate the instrument you intend to play. So if you have something specific, maybe you have a group of traveling teachers, for instance, and you want to ask them which teacher 
they are going to be traveling with. Maybe you have to ask them what their t-shirt size is because they're getting t-shirts. Maybe they're going to be lucky enough to go to a winery and you have to ask them what types of wines they like. There's my that, question. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever the question might be, whatever kind of trip you're planning. So whatever that needs to be, you can add a question here um, as well for this specific trip. It won't necessarily copy everywhere, but you can then ask it so you can get that data back. In addition, like I mentioned with the paragraph, so it's going to copy that information over. As you can see here, you can also do the same thing like with questions and add specific information just for this trip. So if you had a waiver or something that you needed people to recognize, you could add that in here and that would be front and center on the We Travel Trip page. At the bottom here gets into more of the nitty gritty and this is your details as far as those packages. So this allows you options is setting up those packages. You can choose what types of packages you wanna set up. You can customize the price that gets set up. You can customize your auto pay enrollment. You can customize the name, description, the maximum travelers. Um, those are all the things that you can customize. It's the same things you can customize in WeTravel. It's just allowing you to do that over here. And then all of that data will then be sent over to WeTravel for you. The also really nice thing that is offered here is this add payment schedule. So in Sales Manager, when you've set up that payment schedule on your proposal, it will take a copy of those dates and those amounts, and it will translate that onto the packages, each one that you've created for um, the passengers in We Travel. So that allows you to then have that set up so that the passengers know when they're supposed to make those payments. So instead of having to enter that in, it will just put that in for you. So that's a really nice time saver for using the integration. And then when you are all done with what you need to do here, which if you have nothing to change, ultimately you just scroll down to the bottom after you click that first button, and then you click this one that says send trip to WeTravel. So if you did put in that time to really thoroughly think through those default questions and paragraphs, you might not need to even review this. You might just need to push send. Um, so ultimately putting that trip into WeTravel can take you a couple minutes. So that is something that is very helpful to our clients that are using the integration um, that have took that time to, to go through those questions and what they need to have put in the WeTravel trip. So that is it what makes you it push very fast. Through. It does. It does. So putting in that time up front, getting those defaults really saves you a lot, a lot of time in the long run. And that's what our our customers have have realized as well. Excellent. All right. And then the final stage. So now I am on an example trip in Passenger Manager. Um, and ultimately, I just wanted to show you what you can get back out of WeTravel. So some of you might be saying, well, I already have WeTravel and WeTravel is great that they do let you duplicate trips and you can create trips over there. Um, and you absolutely can do that. However, the part that is gonna be the most beneficial, I believe for you, even more than the time saver that I believe happens from creating the trip, because I really do believe that is a time saver. But there is the part about getting the data back. Um, and that allows you to be able to do things like the rooming list and the group leader portal, your insurance reconciliations. Um, you can review past dues. You can connect your passenger data to our other apps like Trip Manager. Um, so there's a lot of different features that by getting that data back is really helpful for you. So that's just yet another great reason to use the integration. Yeah. So what you'll see here is I'm going to open up a passenger and to show you what might come back. So here you can see different data that is filled in on this passenger. And this is somebody I just created that's fake over in WeTravel. Um, and you can see things that I have done. So ultimately I have a name, gender, date of birth, nickname, a traveler type. This is a question we recommend everybody ask um, as far as what type of traveler that is, is that will significantly help you once the data comes over to passenger manager um, so that you'll know how many adults you have, how many students you have, because 
ultimately, as we all know, sometimes the, the age isn't always signify what you want it to signify. Right. So having that traveler type is very helpful. And you can see everything else that might be asked here. So everything else you see on this page is a question you can ask. So this kind of wraps right back around to where I started to say that the questions that you ask when you're over here in company manager, such as passenger preferred name, labeling it preferred name, that means that when that person registers, it's going to put that response right here. So everything is kind of in a circle with the We Travel integration. It's all connected. So when you put those defaults in, you create your trip in We Travel. That is ultimately gets you to this part that I know you all want, which is to get that data back. So that is why it's also so helpful, not just a time saver, but again, have that data that you can manipulate within GTO. Um, and then you can see all the different types of questions again that you might be able to ask. And in addition, you will have the information as far as the package booked. Um, and then if, once you use the rooming list, you would be able to see an assigned room or an assigned bus. Um, again, we really recommend the group leader portal is a great way for that. If you want to see the coaching go we've done on that previously, um, that is very helpful to explain the group leader portal. And then ultimately any options. So if you're one of um, those who likes to use the options for insurance, you would maybe see those options here of what types of insurance they've used. I used an example of just an add-on to my trip of horseback riding, which I put as free, so I didn't have to pay for my testing. <laughs> but ultimately, <laughs> that is something that you could see um, here, is that anything that was added on to your trip in We Travel, you would then have come back and see that amount, and it would be added in ultimately to your the full package price. And then in addition to passengers, we have two other areas. First, there's customers. Um, so what you can see here is in We Travel, what you'll have is a customer who then has a passenger. We Travel calls them buyers. Um, but ultimately, it's just the one person who is paying for maybe one, two, three, four, four people. So ultimately, my name is listed here, Christina Luth, and I was paying for two people. And what I could do is I can go to this customer and I can see their history. I can see any trips they've registered for in the past. I can see any passengers that have traveled with them. I can see all of their payments that they have made and, and if there's any notes. So that is something too, you'll get that basic data about that customer, but that customer in the long run can help you kind of see a running list of people who've traveled with you a lot. And finally, we have transactions. And this is the final part of the integration, which I'm gonna go ahead and open one up here. Let's see if this one, some of this was fake data. Okay, so this is an in information that came through the, in the integration with WeTravel. And this is as soon as there is a payment made in WeTravel, it will, within um, like five to 10 minutes, it will post over in GTO. Um, so if it is a bank transaction, an ACH, usually that is a transaction status of pending. Once it's cleared, it will come back and let you know if it's cleared or possibly failed. That happens too sometimes. So anything with transactions, that's gonna come over from We Travel. And you can see here, we have information such as the participant that was paid, and we have the transaction information, um, also fees. Any fees that were charged in the process would be listed. So you have that for your ultimate, your, your books at the end of the day. What is very helpful too, again, if you're using this integration, it's not showing right now because we, and I have done this in a previous Coach and Go, but when you do have new transactions to post to group accounting, you'll have an orange button right here that allows you to post those to your trip and group accounting, and it will then take any new transactions that are cleared and put them there so that way you have a running total and you can ultimately group accounting, compare how much you've received to how much you maybe have paid out to your, your suppliers. And that 
is as short as we could make it the we travel <laughs> integration so a whole lot of information here um which um is there for you and we highly encourage you if you're already a we travel customer to reach out to us in the help desk we can help you get that integration started if you're not using we travel and you are interested in using we travel for your passengers to register and let us know about that too and we'd be happy to help you figure that out again you would need a we travel account first um, but you can reach out to us if you have questions that's fantastic wow all right so one of the things that you had talked about a little bit too was um making sure that the trip is built in gto and sending it over to we travel from gto mm -hmm. and again just to reiterate that fact, if you do it that way, then you have the ability for all of that information to travel back over from We Travel into Passenger Manager. So if exactly, you, if you've done it, if you've gone over to We Travel and actually built the trip, that won't have that connection because since we didn't send it from GTO to We Travel, it won't automatically come back in to GTO. So Correct. Um, again, mm -hmm. save yourself, save yourself a lot of time, get as much of the automation as you possibly can uh, by sending that trip just through that trip manager portal with that little we travel trip button. All you have to do is make sure that's all filled out and send it over and you're good to go. So Absolutely. Yes. And you know, not only is it going to allow you to have that connection at the end, but I really do hear from everybody that uses it that even though it was, yes, a little bit of legwork at the beginning, but it does save them time sending that trip to We Travel in the long run because um, it is allowing you to take some of those specifics to what you've already entered in to your right. trip in GTO. Um, so then you don't have to re enter it into We Travel. So it's it's a time saver and it's just allowing you to have more information into GTO. But so also, when you, when you helpful. consider when you consider the automation of retrieval of information and how that automatically goes back into the system, instead of having to manually enter that for every passenger, mm -hmm. it comes over already. And like you said, you right. can then send that to group accounting. And so that automatically sends that batch of those to group accounting. So instead of right. sitting there and manually entering each and every record, you're having that taken care of for you. So again, right. if you're not and using we travel, let us know. <laughs> Absolutely. And even better, what I didn't even mention is an important part is not only do you get when people register, but you also get when they update. So if right. somebody decides that they want to update something later on in the process, it'll also let you know, right? It'll change right into GTO. So it really does give you that, that data. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for all that information. Absolutely. Really great information for our for our members to have. And um, also just a reminder, if you've not followed us on our social media channels, make sure to do so. You, sub you can subscribe to Group Travel Odyssey on YouTube. You can follow us on LinkedIn and you can like us on our Facebook page as well. Um, all of these GTO Coach and Goes, a lot of our other media presentations, um, our Destination Dispatch episodes, they're all on our YouTube channel. So if you go to the Group Travel Odyssey YouTube page, you will see all of our multimedia presentation, even some, some fun stuff that our team has put together during holidays and our outings and stuff like that. So um, go in there and take a look, if you would, please. Um, just a reminder, GTO Coach and Go happens every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so you can look for us not next week, but the week after we're going to be having another GTO Coach and Go. When we don't, on the weeks that we do not have GTO Coach and Go, we do have GTO Fast Break. And those are little snippets of information that Christina and Corey and other people will put together. And we post that directly to the community forum. So for those of you on GTO, go to your community forum. You will see it posted in the um, activities. You will also see it posted in the media if you go up to the media box. And you'll be able to find the weekly or biweekly fast breaks as well. And that's just little snippets of info to help you use GTO a little bit more efficiently. Um, so make sure to take advantage of watching all of those as well. Christina, once again, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us all this fantastic information. And um, I'm sure we'll see you probably in a couple of weeks as well. Probably. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you all for watching. And if again, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can reach out to us through the help desk and that's help at gtonetwork.com. Put help in the subject line. Also, you can get more information about GTO on our website, grouptravelodyssey.com.
So thank you so much uh, for joining us. And until next time, have a fantastic week and take care. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching this episode of GTO Coach and Go. We invite you to stay connected with Group Travel Odyssey on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And be sure to check out more of our media, including Destination Dispatch and the Destinations Beyond Expectations podcast. Please visit our website, grouptravelodyssey.com, where you can learn more about GTO and request a demo. Group Travel Odyssey, business without boundaries.